We're the 2023 MIT iGEM team, and today we're really excited to talk to you about our project around cancer cachexia and how we plan to tackle it. First, let us introduce ourselves. My name is Jeannie. I'm Allison. And I'm Katie. Now let's launch into our project. So on today's agenda, we're first going to go over what cancer cachexia is, and then we will cover our therapeutic approach to this problem. Third of all, we are going to go over our summer project, and then we will end with a kahoot. So what is cancer cachexia? Cachexia is a wasting syndrome that is characterized by severe muscle and fat loss. It is experienced by 80% of advanced stage cancer patients, and is also the direct cause of 30% of cancer-related deaths. Cachexia also appears in several other conditions, such as chronic heart failure, diabetes, and severe burn injuries. According to cancer.gov, in its most severe form, the physical deterioration that accompanies cachexia can leave a person not only weak and fatigued, but also unable to or unwilling to eat, with alarming changes in physical appearance. The only approved treatment in the United States for cachexia is diet and exercise. Cancer cachexia is caused by overproduction of interleukin-6 in the tumor microenvironment. Interleukin-6, also known as IL-6, is a cytokine, which means it's a small signaling protein that crucially functions in the immune response. Overproduction of IL-6 is what's responsible for cachexia, which is when the immune response is overactivated, causing wasting associated with cachexia. Therefore, our iGEM project is focused on creating a therapy that reduces cachexia symptoms by decreasing the levels of IL-6. We propose to engineer macrophages with a synthetic chimeric antigen receptor to phagocytose IL-6. Our proposed therapy is inspired by the natural role of macrophages in the body. Macrophages are cells, also known as professional phagocytes, which means that as part of the immune response, they recognize foreign particles and cell debris and eat them up, which is called phagocytosis. Our therapy takes this um, natural function of macrophages and engineers the macrophages to also uptake interleukin-6. Naturally, macrophages usually phagocytose pretty large particles, even whole cells, and IL-6 is very small in comparison. So the first thing that our therapy does is create aggregates of IL-6 so that the macrophages are actually able to phagocytose them. So the macrophages will first sense the IL-6 aggregates via the CAR construct, and then they'll respond by phagocytosing IL-6, which will then decrease overall levels of IL-6 circulating throughout the body. So to go through a quick schematic of what our therapy looks like, first we'll have the macrophages secrete an aggregation protein. The macrophage is the very large light blue cell, and the green globs are the aggregation protein. Then the aggregation protein will bind multiple copies of IL-6 to produce the aggregates. After that, the aggregates will be identified by the CAR receptors on the macrophages. And then after binding, the CAR receptors will induce phagocytosis and the IL-6 aggregates will be eaten up and degraded. So what exactly is a CAR protein? CAR, or chimeric antigen receptor, is a receptor designed to bind to a specific protein typically expressed on a cancer cell. In our case, our CAR will bind to IL-6. Our CAR design fuses together four protein domains. The first one is extracellular. It is the anti-IL-6 single chain variable fragment from a existing IL-6 monoclonal antibody, which is pharmaceutically known as serucumab. The purpose of the extracellular component is to identify IL-6. The second component is transmembrane. Our transmembrane component is CD8, which is a glycoprotein that helps induce a signaling cascade inside the macrophage. The third component is intracellular. Our intracellular component is either FC-gamma or MEGF10, both are commonly used in CAR T cells, and their role is to induce phagocytosis for the macrophage. Both FC gamma and MEGF10 are popular, but as part of our project, we are going to identify which one hopefully functions better or more efficiently. The last component is the fluorescent tag. 
We are utilizing EGFP, or green fluorescent protein, in order to help visualize if our protein was expressed in the macrophage. So how exactly do we plan to carry out this project over the course of our summer? The first stage is design. We design, order, and construct our plasmids, which transcribe our desired CAR and IL-6 proteins. At this point in the summer, this stage has already been mainly done, but we utilize a lot of online resources such as Benchling to help us design our plasmids. The second stage is transfect. With our plasmids mini prepped and ready for transfection, we will be transfecting them into mammalian cells as a mode of experimentation. We are using two types of cell lines. The raw 264.7 cell line, which is a murine macrophage cell line, and the HEC-293 cell line, which is a human embryonic kidney cell line. The first cell line will be used to express our CAR protein and the second one for our IL-6 fusion protein. The third stage is the experiment stage. We will observe the interaction between our engineered macrophage cells and the engineered IL-6 proteins. Hopefully we will see our desired results. Finally is the visualized stage. We will visualize our results with fluorescent microscopy and measure data with flow cytometry. This will allow us to quantify how much fluorescence is present in our cells and hopefully we will be able to gather and, and analyze data from such. Thank you guys for paying attention, and now to test all you've learned on Cachexia and our project, we have a really fun and short Kahoot. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. And thank you to our mentors and advisors listed below who have given us their expert advice, and we would not be here without you. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us via Instagram. We're happy to answer any questions via DM at igem underscore MIT. Bye!